sound event detection if wildlife is an intrusion dialogue energy and evolution error. So this is the type of breakdown. So the, so the type of breakdown is that sound event detection is an approach using artificial intelligence in detection of sound events. So we will detect what is happening. Let's say someone is typing and we can differentiate between someone who is knocking the door. Next is wildlife reserve, uh, reserve intrusion. That means that we are trying to detect the sound of poachers, uh, including the wildlife uh, reserves, to take uh, the goods. Next is the mailbox energies are the features that from the sounds, the sound that we can extract these mailbox energies from the sounds to detect these uh, occurrences. So convolutional neural network is the classifier that I am uh, in use for this uh, detection. Okay, so the scope of the study is to detect the vehicle presence, the chainsaw activities, and the wood getting activities. These are the illegal activities done by the intruders, poachers, and illegal loggers in the environment of the Malaysian forest and in the range of 100 meters and 16 meters and 30 meters. So the background of the study is that the wildlife folks. So the wildlife reserve is a sanctuary for many endangered species. And wildlife reserves intruders are the poachers and illegal loggers. They're causing disruption to the nature. And then the current available solutions are very costly. And implementing modern technology might allow more cost-efficient solution. Intruders often emit lots of sound. This is uh, referred to wildlife conservative and science. They, they state that these poachers are living in the forest and they emit a lot of sound while they are in the land. It's just that the forest is too vast for us to actually see where they are actually. And that the sound event detection is expected to be able to assist the detainment of these intruders. So, wildlife well, uh, intrusions has been very uh, rapid lately. And this is based on the report on uh, Malaysian Biodiversity Enforcement Corporation at work. They are uh, they're trying to uh, cope with this problem. So it shows here that it, there's a grand total of 1,500 intrusions in Malaysia and Sekolah Malaysia. So the current available solutions are like people need to go in the jungle and they need to go routine, do some routine uh, tools. And all that costs a lot of money because uh, uh, let's try, because it's a big land to, to do surveillance. So Ender Open is a, uh, the national park in Malaysia. is are, is actually 800 and 489 kilometers uh, square kilometers. So that's a huge land cover. So we need to reduce the cost as much as possible. So these are the critically endangered animals in Malaysia currently. So we have the Malayan tiger, 250, and Malayan tapir, 300, and the elephants, 1500. So the objective is to determine the sound event techniques suitable for surveillance in this context. To evaluate the performance of these sound event techniques with different environmental conditions because the noise in the jungle has many uh, noise. <laughs> to assess the applicability of the sound event detection on this wildlife context, if it's actually doable, is it practical? So I've done a uh, couple of literature review based on mailbox energies and CNN. So this is based on the um, G case 2017. It's a competition between uh, researchers. They were to try to solve the problem of finding a rare sound event. So these rare sound events are baby crying and gunshots and glass break, which, uh, which occur in short, in very short time. So the, the best here shows that we got, by using metal energies and convolutional network with some hybrid LSTM and new recurrent neural network, 
dengan C about 93% with an error rate of 0.1 bit which is very uh, applicable if it is done on the real, real world chance. So my methodology is that I will start by collecting the data from the parts, the affected data of the wood cutting and the vehicle presence in the in the jungle. And then we will extract the features. And then basically we will feed, do some feature analysis before we feed it into the neural network to actually understand what it is that the neural network see. Because the term of garbage in, garbage out, we don't want to put anything in that's useless. And then as far as we will evaluate the the classification, so using different models. So, in the feature extraction, we have uh, five parameters that we can tweak, and these parameters I can show different uh, different outputs. So, we have the frame length. This is the length that we are observing every second, and then the frame scale. The frame scale is the amount that we jump from the first. Frame. It's like as if we were looking here, and how much are we moving to see the whole room? Slowly, slowly sliding, jumping at 50 milliseconds. And then the number of filters that we are taking is the number of metal energies in uh, in terms of metal packs. And then we use the uh, 512. Uh, fast Fourier transform resolution. This is the resolution of how much, uh, how fine is the exception of the frequency domain. And then the minimum and maximum frequency. The minimum and maximum frequency is the uh, lowest, let's say, if we humans, we can hear 20 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. So anything more than that is, uh, we cannot validate it anymore. So, Assuming that we are uh, trying to achieve the human level of intelligence in detecting, we will uh, focus on that. Okay. So these are the first um, preliminary results on the extraction. So, so as you see on the left, uh, on the left, yeah, uh, that left. So the ambience, can, you can see that the in between here. The, these are the banks upwards, and this is the time moving forward. So every frame, one frame is the 100 milliseconds. Every 100 milliseconds, we will take the data from the sound, and then we will extract 40 mel, mel, mel block energies. So, and then we, this is a uh, this is a recognition in heat maps, so we can see the difference here. So. It shows here that we are uh, there is a quite a lot significant uh, significant difference between these metal energies and so between the ambience and the captured sound, we can see they are very uh, they have their distinct pattern. So that the, this implies that the the neural network later or the any model statistical model that will be predicting can be able to predict as we are predicting here. We can see the average will always stay around there. So the distinct pattern can be used. So the research from, um, the research flow chart is that first we will collect data and then we will do some audio augmentation. So audio augmentation is the the audio that we collect, we want to make more data from the data we already have because uh, as we know deep learning needs more data, the more data the, the better. So we are using uh, shifting and adding noise so that we have more data. And then we will extract the mellow energies. And then we will split it into two samples, the in sample and the out sample. So the in sample will be used in the training and the validation of the neural network. So, and then we will enter the model. So here, you can see model X. Model X is that we will change different types of models to try which one is better. So we'll, because as we know, uh, neural networks are very, 
they have uh, many some testing on different domains. So we will try to change the model of many times until we get the best and optimal solution. And then, as we finish the model, as the model is uh, complete, we will use the uh, out of sample data. This is the data that they never uh, was they never validated before. So we will use the out of sample data and evaluate it. So this is uh, the model of experiments that what we need to change about them is that we can have a lot of convolutional layers or we can have uh, more dense layers. Dense layers are the, the fully connected layers. So the convolution layer can, can vary between we can have uh, one, two, three or more and then the size of the convolutional layer and then the size of the density. So we will mix and match that until we find the optimal solution. So here's uh, the preliminary results. So from the in-sample data training, we used, I used uh, 64 uh, convolutional net, and then I will match full, and then flatten and with a 64, 64 uh, fully connected neural network. And then apply a softmax layer. So a softmax layer is the layer that will turn the output and, and divide it into the classes with their percentage of which ones switch. So the total of the softmax output will be one. So it will be like a majority vote. But the more, the better, they will give a higher percentage. And then we will do a step called threshold layer. So even though that the softmax layer put, uh, outputs the percentage, so only after it reaches that more than 75%, we will accept that. Because we don't want any false alarms. Because false alarms are not really useful in surveillance. We can't use a system that's always constantly giving us false alarms. So now here is the uh, import validation. So you can see here uh, it weighs from about it, it, lo it reached local result by about 10 epochs. So this is using the um, uh, data set that I gathered earlier from Andaron Bay. So that is that is uh, how it. <laughs> so that is. 25,000 data of five seconds cut out of, of sounds of uh, the ambience and the hatchet, chainsaws, and the vehicles. So this is in between 30 meters, 60 meters, and 100 meters. So all these are fed in to the system. And we have the results. Okay. So here's the confusion matrix the results of the preliminary results. Uh, so, as you can see here, down here, is that, the, this is the predictor and that's the actual, so the actual uh, vehicle, and this is like, over up there, ambience shows that anything up there is called the false alarm. So anything that is up there, false alarm, we need to reduce it. Because it's not a reliable system if it's always giving false alarms. So it shows here that uh, the results are promising from the five second cutouts, we can we are able to achieve about 98%. So this is my study plan. So as you can see, I started at 30 March and registered as a student and then done the uh, study a little bit on sound event detection and the techniques used comparing them. And then I collected the data at August. This is authentic data from the Nairobi National Park with help with Wildlife Conservative Nation and Pagilita Nation. And then uh, right now we are at the, I'm at the ERP that is November 22. So, so on after this, I will proceed in tweaking the different, uh, the different models and different sizing of models, uh, and then the different, um, the, the metal energies too. So as we have those parameters that we need to tweak in uh, to get better results, and then we will, uh, I will tweak against. Uh, the threshold, the final decision after the software layer. 
the threshold will be uh, we need, I'm going to make uh, my conclusion is that after the output we need to reduce the false alarms so in order to do that we need to and uh, so my suggestion is we will do this uh, tracing between 0 seconds and 10 seconds even though we are taking 5 seconds but we will check that uh, 5 seconds with a jump of 1 second so it's like 9, nine times validation on 1 10 second before we were able to uh, classify this is as an intuition So the significance of doing all this is the, to achieve the sustainable goals of uh, the UN, that is life on land, that is to protect and restore, promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem, save the environment and these uh, animals, especially those tigers, 250. How can we say we are a nation anymore if there's no more tigers? <laughs> Uh, 